Yo, what's up guys, it's Kizzle here, and in this video we're gonna be talking about DLC 1 for Call of Duty World War 2 Zombies. Now prepare your anuses because this shit is coming straight from Call of Duty and uh, from Activision themselves, and also this was found in the code for Call of Duty World War 2 as well, yes. <laughs> it, it hasn't even been a week, and we already know a little bit about DLC 1, basically we know where it's going to be. I will be showing you guys how the map is going to look like, and also we're gonna dive into a little bit into the storyline aspect of things as well wall and basically we're, we're gonna be talking about DLC 1 in general how it's gonna be and uh, what what can we expect and everything like that so first of all this is coming straight from Call of Duty and uh, quickly just want to let you know the Easter egg for DLC 1 is out there as well I was personally sent a code for DLC 1 I haven't looked at it but my guy actually told me that aka the gaming revolution uh, he told me that the Easter egg is basically out there other people have sent him other people have sent other people and basically it is floating around all around the community and everything like that so I would say stay away from that sort of things I personally am not gonna talk about it on my channel and I have not seen it I have the code uh, in my DMs but I have not seen it because it was like freaking cluttered and at the same time it's something that I don't want to see if you know what I'm saying but anyways this is something that we have seen in the trailer of the Carrington now as you guys know Carrington trailer was something that we have seen a couple of days before Call of Duty World War 2 came out and a lot of people were surprised to what the heck is going on because towards the end we can actually see that they were hinting towards DLC 1 of course here we have the release date for DLC 1 and it's gonna be called the resistance so so that's something that came straight from Call of Duty themselves so it's gonna be called the resistance and it's gonna release on January 31st first on PlayStation 4 and here on the mini map or it was basically showing us like where the multiplayer maps gonna take place and on top you can see the Iron Cross and that's exactly where the zombie map is going to be now check this out I will have a side-by-side -side comparison or basically I will have a picture on top of picture and I will go back and forth where you guys can see on the trailer we can see that that Iron Cross that is a little bit above Germany and that is where this map is going to take place because that's where the island of something or Heligoland yes that's the one uh, that's where the island of Heligoland is it is quite a distance but at the same time we can see it is there now really really quickly this is how Heligoland in real life looks like and I am pumped because this is something that we have seen in the code as well well, now of course like in the codes uh, they are not going to tell us like the map name and so far we don't really know what the map is gonna be called or maybe it can be called Heligoland itself who knows time will tell us for sure but uh, we already know that the final Reich was inside the code and we also had the house code meaning Grosten house and of course that's the second bonus map or the secret map that we can actually play in Call of Duty World War 2 so that's that and we know that shit is legit as but what I'm saying beneath we can see it says underscore island and guess what in Black Ops 3 we had similar coding it, it had uh, island and we basically had island for Zetsubunashima in Black Ops 3 but I really hope that we do get to experience zombie on the beach if you know what I'm saying also DLC 3 for Black Ops 3 had a coding of Stalingrad like ZM underscore Stalingrad or something then Stalingrad if you know what I'm saying and we know that was the uh, location aka Stalingrad Russia and uh, aka the Gorod or not the Gorod but Gorod Krovi so we know that shit was real and yes it was found in the code and of course like I said the Easter egg or the casual Easter egg is already out there in the wild and I, I really hate the fact that it is out but but hey, what what can we do? But I am personally really, really excited. Now, this is something that Wikipedia would tell you if you actually search about. Now, before I get into it, I really just quickly want to show you guys this clip because I really feel like this is connected with uh, DLC 1 and everything like that because in the final right, we are on a search of basically getting those pictures or those painting or art. And of course, like Mary is looking for a cloth. But this video that I will play right now kind of shows us or basically tells us that what we're going to experience in DLC 1 so take a take a listen and I'll be right back and we're gonna talk a little bit more about Heli Goland the Führer had asked for something exceptional for my staff a soldier who does not rest a soldier who does not fear and a soldier who does not shy away from the shadow of death I have found that soldier or perhaps it is better to say 
that I have birthed him. <laughs> but I'm getting ahead of myself. I had begun to lose hope in our ability to find artifacts of significance. But then, divine providence, the discovery of a lifetime, the hill to the legendary sword of the Holy Roman Emperor, Frederick Barbarossa, the embodiment of German nobility, German power. The Ahnenerbe was sent to reclaim the sword piece for Hitler's personal collection, and they could not move it, not with chains, not with tractors, nothing. When the mountain will not come to... I brought everything to the mountain. My tools, my staff, the foremost weapons expert in the Wehrmacht, Gruppenführer Heinz Richter. Little did we know that we were about to uncover something that would change our understanding of the world. Now that was my man, Dr. Straub, and he basically talked about like him creating a new zombie or he actually birthed him. So I'm sure he's talking about a zombie boss that we're going to see in DLC 1 and that's just like a uh, basically a teaser of what we can expect in DLC 1 of course that doesn't tell us much but it's something like hey we have more coming for you that's exactly what Dr. Straub is saying and of course that's a hint from Sledgehammer Games to us D doesn't say much but of course we have seen in the real trailer that they were actually talking about DLC 1 and of course in the coding itself we have seen the island map and basically it it's gonna be above Germany and it has a lot of World War 2 history and mythology and that's exactly what we're gonna dive in to right now of course I may stutter here because I'm gonna be actually reading this and there are a couple of words and names that I may not be able to pronounce because they are in German so let's actually just start this one right here so it says Halley Goland is located 46 kilometers that is equivalent of 29 miles off of the German coastline and consists of two islands the populated triangle that is about one kilometer square feet and, and that is like the main island that is called Haptinsel hopefully I'm not butchering it but that is to the west and the Dune and that's basically called Haligolandic the Helen to the east and Haligoland generally refers to the former island and Dune is something somewhat smaller at 0.7 kilometers square feet and that is lower and surrounded by sand beaches oh that is something that I really damn want to see in uh, DLC 1 Sledgehammer Games if you're listening just make that shit happen fam it is not permanently inhabited but it is today Day, the location of Haligoland's airport. The main island is commonly divided into the underland, which is basically means lower land, Haligolandic at sea level. To the right on the photograph where the harbor is located, the Oberland, aka Upperland, Haligolandic, consisting of the plateau visible in the photographs and the middle land between them on one side of the island. The middle land came into being in 1947 as a result of explosions detonated by the British. Royal Navy, the so-called Big Bang. The main island also features small beaches in the north and the south and drops to the sea 50 meters which is equivalent of 160 feet high in the northwest and the southwest. In the latter, the ground continues to drop underwater to a depth of 56 meters which is equivalent of 184 feet below sea level. Heligoland's most famous landmark is the Lange Anna. I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly or not but that means Long Anna or tall Anna, oh, very spooky, <laughs> a freestanding rock column or stack, uh, which is around 47 meters, which is equivalent of 154 feet high, found northwest of the island proper. The two islands were connected until 1720 when the natural connection was destroyed by a storm flood. The highest point is on the main island, reaching 61 meters, which is equivalent of 200 feet above sea level. Although culturally closer to North Frisia in the German district of North uh, North Friesland. The, the two islands are part of the district of Pinburg in the state of Schleswig Holstein. <laughs> Completely butchering everything here and might be. The main island has a good harbor and is frequented mostly by sailing yachts. But that right here is gonna do it for ya. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Check out some other videos on the screen. Subscribe if you're new and I am legit excited. I legit want this map like right now because I, I feel like we have done everything in the final Reich, although there is more to it. But uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments, and I'll see you very freaking soon.